Hi, my name is Lissy, and in this video we are going to paint this beautiful moth using my new set Moonshine paints. But first let's see the brushes. First I would like to show you the ones that I use the most and these are the very basic gouache brushes from round to flat to even liner. They all have a little bit of different texture to each other and uh, they are good for any kind of clean illustration that you might want to do with gouache brushes which is basically what my style is so this is the ones that we are gonna use the most in the upcoming uh, illustration as well next we have these more washi paint kind of um, things look at the texture going they are very juicy and if you are into the more grittier and textured kind of painting then they are perfect for you next we are gonna move on to the dry brushes these are meant to uh, emulate how it is when you are running out of paint on your paintbrush and i think i did a great job with it uh, to be honest and i have uh, two other brushes in this set that are gouache one of them is uh, this one the sunburn one and the last one which is a completely opaque brush as you can see on the screen with a burnt edge so it can make really interesting textures in accenting you will find a sketching brush that you can use for adding details at the end plus some watercolorish looks which is more just uh, adding uh, water to your paint and some smudgy brushes that is just a little bit of fun extra gouache paints you might notice that there's an entire stamp brushes section these ones that i'm swatching now are um, textured brushes that you can use i mostly want to use them for background so i made sure that they are really high resolution and the ones that you are seeing right now they are for creating texture for something that you already drawn or you know you can go crazy and you can use it the way that you want to use it getting into the drawing uh, the first thing that i have to note is that i'm gonna speed up the entire process the sketch you can download uh, from the set free so you can check out and try to color it with something that you have or well if you bought my brushes then you can do what i'm doing i'm going to use the um, symmetry tool for this because well mods are pretty symmetric and it will look much prettier <laughs> the sketch at least um one thing that i will note though that for coloring i will not use this symmetry tool because i think it looks much more organic and hand painted if you don't paint it the exact same way on both sides so, but for the sketch so everything goes to the same spot it's perfect to use the symmetry tool What I didn't mention in the beginning is that I'm using the sketching brush for this, which is found under accenting, obviously. You have to use the brushes that are in the set. Once I was happy with the sketch, I made another layer, turned on off the assistance and I turned off the opacity of the original sketch and started coloring with the basic tempera brush which is basically my favorite brush because uh, i really really like the clean look that i mentioned so many times already um, but yes i will color every single wing on its own just to make sure that they will look not completely the same but the same shape at the same time so they have this little texture that you can see on the screen but on the or at the end they will not look uh, like complete exact copies of each other once i'm done with coloring both of the top wings i decided that i will put the sketch on top of it so i can see that the Wings are going to the same spot that they, they are supposed to go. And you can see that I'm struggling a bit with colors. 
That's because the canvas that I made for this is a very, very detailed can canvas and it makes the colors so much more uh, darker than they are supposed to be or what you saw on the screen. If you look at the top right corner, you can see how light the blue is that I'm using, yet it comes out so much darker. Well, this is just a feature of the canvas and uh, in the set there's five uh, color palettes to get you started on this very weird journey of using pastel colors but they still come out as dark colors. I actually really like this idea but because it's a bit like unpredicted and it's cool to see uh, different colors come out coming out from these very light shades and finally I'm coloring the body of the moth and then after that we are gonna add some details I was battling if I'm supposed to use like different kind of brushes in this video that what I usually use but I thought that that would be a bit hypocritical if I would go and try to teach you something or show you something that I personally am not a master of not saying that I'm a master of this one but at least I know what I'm doing or what I'm aiming for so even though I was trying to go and use different kind of brushes I always ended up on the top part of my brush set and only used the more juicy brushes for accenting and uh, adding some little details but the main part or the big parts of this drawing is all the round brushes <laughs> I decided against uh, deleting every single little imperfection that I did in this uh, drawing, which you just saw because the little line that goes down on the wing that I'm erasing right now is just not good. It will not shade well, so I uh, deleted it. I also would like to point out that I use the uh, hue saturation change a lot because Sometimes I just don't get the color right or I think that another color would look better and I would urge you to do the same if you are not happy with your colors that are coming out, not, on, not just on this drawing or any drawing, like literally any drawing that you have, because it doesn't make your drawing lose quality, even though it's a raster program, as we all know, it will not make it worse in any way and you are not a worse artist just because you change the color, especially when you are working with a canvas like this, where you can not really predict the color that you are using uh, in the beginning. I also made this little discovery while I was drawing this, is that on this canvas, when you are going a little bit of a browner or like golden shade, it actually becoming a little bit of golden so I thought that was really cool and I really wanted to use it so I went with the golden accent on the wings. Here's something that I'm using those juicy brushes on even though it's just little hairs and you can't really tell because it's not so... it's not the main part of the drawing but uh, it's a really nice brush to make tiny little strokes with.
one of the bigger part of my drawings whenever I draw is that I add multiply layers because they are not opaque at all and it makes like really interesting translucent vibes. It makes it a bit more magical which is always a really important thing for me because I really like uh, magical drawings and I really like uh, making them. I think that's my style, just magic on its own. So I'm doing a little multiply layer here and try to add a little bit of translucency or transparency to the moth. And the body itself, what you'll see me do right now, is the shading that I use the most when using this style, which I start with a lighter color and then I keep adding smaller and smaller shapes with just a hint darker color. At this point it's time to add something that will pop off the page and that is this really light accents on the lower wings. it's time to get a background for us. Um, this can be a bit problematic for you in the beginning, as you can see on the right wing that it's uh, translucent. I ended up not keeping the texture on the wing because I uh, wanted to make it completely opaque. But if you want to keep the texture, it's really important that you can do it. The way you do it is that you duplicate your layer that is translucent and then alpha lock it and then fill it with complete white and you keep doing this until it looks completely opaque the white layer always goes under the gouache layer and i am telling you it's gonna work look i'm gonna turn off, off the canvas now <laughs> look how light it is Yes, this is again something to get used to and uh, this is a great trick by the way if you can't find the exact color that you used you just color pick from the layer that is under the canvas and you can do it by clicking on the layers menu and then just turning off the entire canvas and just color pick. This is once again th those imperfect moments that I did not edit out because I thought that oh this is so relatable for artist. Where is that layer that is not perfect and it doesn't look the same that I want to look it look and uh, finally I found it but like keep turning on and off the layers. I know there's an easier way to find it but for me that is the way or well, that's the easy way for me personally.
okay, a little bit of a real talk here again, is that when I was at this point, I was like, hmm, wow, I did so good and so many things already. And then I saw that, oh, well, there's still top things left and uh, the entire body. But thankfully, I wanted the bottom wings to be the main part of this story. So there was not much to do with the top wings. I basically just replicated what I did on the bottom one and uh, did some color blocking to make it a bit more interesting and um, more like it's stained glass kind of. So there was not much happening on the top wings. My discovery of that golden color got the better of me and I thought that oh golden moon that would be so cool on it and then it kind of looked wonky so I decided to change the color later but I still kept the idea of pretty golden accents on the outer side of the wings so to have some balance in between these colors You will see me again turn off the layers soon enough because I decided that the top wings need some pop. So I decided to copy the pop color of the bottom wings. So it has some kind of unity feeling to this moth that the wings are of the same moth, if you know what I mean. You should comment something down below if you find the dot that I accidentally put on top of the canvas and I didn't realize it until much later. Do you do that also? I bet everyone does it. But it's bothering me right now when I'm watching the videos again that the dot is there. If you see the dot, let me know. Moving on to the last part, which is the body of our moth. It, I wanted to do something little tribal, little very simple. I don't want the body to take all the attention from the wings that I worked on for so long. So I just decided on a little fur imitation and a tiny bit of tribal motif. And here comes the little furry bits on the top of the head which I did with the accenting pencil and I think she looks very cute and very regal. We have arrived to the last little part of our illustration which is adding the stars and after this we are done and I really hope that you find this a bit useful to see how I use my brushes and thank you so much if you decided to support me 